about your relatives and your DNA. And so as I dug deeper into it and, and found out more, I also found that um, on Ellis Island, on that, if you go to their webpage, you can look up um, relatives and it'll actually show you when they came to our country and what ship they actually came on. So, and it's free, it's totally fascinating that you can do that. But I found, about, I found out about my great-grandfather, who was my mother's father, and um, their name is, was Markusik. It, it changed from Markovich to Markusik, so he was George Markovich coming over. And there's a really interesting story about the family coming over. So he, he was the first that came over, and when he came, uh, we had a relative here. He had to have a sponsor family and, to, and a place to live and a job. So those were the three things that you had to have, at least it, in his case, to come over to the country. So somebody that you were related to, um, you had to have a place that you were going to live, and then you had to have some kind of work as well. So he had all those three things. Uh, relatives that we knew in uh, West Virginia, where we were from in town. Um, he, his work would be to be a coal miner, and, uh, and they provided a place for him to live until he could get his own place, which he did. And then, one by one, he would bring his other family members. So he actually, he came first without his wife, and then he brought his wife over and left the grandchildren with their, their parents uh, back in Yugoslavia. And then they brought each child over, one by one, the, the, their boy and then their daughter. Now this is the interesting thing about the daughter. The daughter was the last to come over, so it's kind of like the youngest child, you know, the, the most neglected. But she came over and when she came, she was wearing a beautiful dress and she, all she had with her was a, a paper pinned to her dress with the, with the town that they lived in. So she got over here not knowing any English and all she had is this paper and uh, people would find her and put her on a train and she'd go to the next town, they'd look at it and say, okay, next town. And she ended up all the way here um, by that means. What I think is so interesting is that the father went first and then he brought, one by one, everybody over. And today we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension. So Jesus ascends into heaven but it's not to leave his disciples. We hear in, in, in some of the prayers of the church that where the body goes, or where the head goes, the body will also follow. So Jesus, in his ascension, he's not leaving the disciples. You know, he's not saying uh, goodbye to them forever. He's going to heaven so that where he goes, they also may follow. Now the thing is, it's, it's almost like the, the same scenario. In order for us to get to heaven, we need those same things. We need someone there uh, that we belong to to get us there. We need a place, and we also have needed some work to do in this life. So first of all, the someone there in, is, in heaven is Jesus, and the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus has gone before us into heaven, and he wants to bring all the rest of us to him. So we have that, and he says in the Gospel today, no one comes to the Father except through me. So unless you, unless you know me and love me and come through me, there is no way to the Father. And if you do not accept me in baptism, you will be rejected by my Heavenly Father. So he's our relative, right? He's, he's the one that we, by relating to in this life, come to know and love and serve. And he's, he's our contact. He's our, our, our relative, our person that knows us in heaven. The second thing is we have to have a place. You know, so if we're going to get to heaven, we also need a place to go in heaven. And Jesus says in John that I have already prepared a place for you. So I'm preparing a place for you so that where I am, you also may be. So Jesus has prepared a place for you in heaven. You have a place to go to. And finally, the third part is that we need to participate in some work. So as Catholics, we believe that we are saved by faith and work. So it's through our faith and baptism, but also it's, it's, it's through what we do to participate in the life of Christ here on this earth. And so we hear in the Gospel, Jesus says, For those that believe in my name, for those that live in me, you will do great works. And so he says, you will heal the sick, 
You will recover sight to the blind. You will be able to cast out Satan. So we're called to participate in the works of Christ. And so we, just like my, must have been grandmother coming up, you know, just like that little girl or great aunt, just like that little girl that came over to this country, are very much in need of a Savior. And Jesus on this ascension, he does those three things for us. First of all, we're related to him in baptism. So if we have been baptized, we already have that relationship. We got one person, Jesus, in heaven that knows us, that loves us, and he is our connection to eternal life. Secondly, he has a place that he has prepared for us. So he promises, I have prepared a place for you so that where I am, you also may be. And third and finally, in this life, we get to participate in his work. We get to do the things that he did. And Jesus promised that we will do, his disciples will do not only the things that he did, but even greater things. Do you believe that? So in baptism, in sharing in the life of Christ, We will do not only what he did, but even greater things. That means that we can heal. That means that we can cast out Satan. That means that we can work miracles with our faith. If only we believe. So on this great day of the ascension, we remember ultimately that Jesus has gone before us to create a place for us in heaven where he will one day welcome us with open arms.